good morning students so in today's class we will see the how a pam signal will be generated so in previous classes i have explained you definitions about the pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation pulse position modulation with the help of a waveforms and then i have explained you sampling techniques right instantaneous sampling natural sampling flat top sampling now in today's class we will see how a pam signal will be generated so i just give a quick review in two, two minutes about the pa amplitude range so modulation means the process of changing the characteristics of a carrier signal in accordance with the baseband signal that phenomenon is known as a modulation so pulse amplitude modulation means so in normal in normal modulations we will use a carrier signal as a sinusoidal signal in normal modulations like amplitude modulation and phase modulation and phase modulation whereas in pulse amplitude modulation means so here we will use a pulses as a carrier wave so in pulse amplitude modulation simply we can say the amplitude of a pulse the carrier varies in, re in respect to the instantaneous values of a modulating signal so it is known as so whereas the remaining parameters are constant like width and position or remains constant in pulse amplitude modulation so it is the simplest and most basic form of a analog pulse modulation so these are the waveforms of a pam so first one is a message signal or we can also call it as a modulating signal or information signal or source signal and second one is a pulsed carrier so there we can see they are the pulses so next to third waveform is a pulse amplitude pulse amplitude modulated signal first one is a modulating signal second one is a pulsed carrier signal third one is a pulse amplitude modulated signal so if you observe in third waveform the width and the position of the pulse is constant but only amplitude will be changes in the third waveform right so those are the waveforms of a pam so in pam only amplitude changes remaining parameters rem remains constant so let me explain about all this this Just a second. So here we go. So it is the block diagram of a generation of a PAM. So if you observe the circuit diagram here, you can able to see modulating signal block and sampling signal and a sampler which is a multiplier and at the output side we are having a PAM. So simply we can say the modulating signal will be generated from the first block. and a pulsed carrier will be generated from the sampling signal block and the two waveforms are given to the sampler which performs a multiplication operation and it multiplies both the modulating signal and sampling signal and at the output side of the sampler we will get a pam pulse amplitude modulated signal so it is a simple circuit block diagram of a generation of a pam we will just give them a modulating signal both the signals at and the output side we will get the pulse amplitude modulated wave so like this we will generate the pam signal so here you can see the waveforms first one is a message signal so which was generated from the first block and second one is a sampling signal which is having a pulses and third one is a pulse amplitude modulation so the sampler circuit will multiply both the input signal and carrier signal and at the output we will get like this pulse amplitude modulated signal so the only amplitude will be changes here so this is how we generate the pam signal so pulse amplitude modulation is a basic form of a pulse modulation in which the signal is sampled at regular and each sample is made proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal at the sampling instant so as i said now the figure one shows the generation of a pam signal from the sampler which has a two inputs that is modulate 
ट्रैकिंग सिग्नल एंड सैम्पलिंग सिग्नल और वी कैन से इट एज ए कैरियर पल्स एंड देन दस एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द सिग्नल प्रोपोर्शनल टू द मॉड्यूलेटिंग सिग्नल थ्रू विच द इंफॉर्मेशन इज कैरियड दिस इज पल्स एम्पलीट्यूड मॉड्यूलेशन सिग्नल एंड फिगर टू शोज द सो हि फिगर टू शोज द सिग्नल एंड द सैम्पलिंग सिग्नल विच इज अ कैरियर ट्रेन ऑफ पल्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ द वे फॉर्म प्लॉटेड इन द टाइम डोमाइन एज ए सेट नाउ सो फर्स्ट वन रिप्रेजेंट द मेसेज सिग्नल सेकंड वन रिप्रेजेंट द सैम्पलिंग सिग्नल एंड बाई मल्टीप्लाइंग दोस टू वी विल गेट द पी एम सिग्नल Pulse modulation may be used for the transmitting of purpose of a analog information such as a continuous speech signal or data. And now we will see the demodulation of a PAM. So in demodulation of a PAM, we will use a low pass filter. So we just give the PAM signal as a input to the low pass filter. And this low pass filter, what is the work of a low pass filter? We already know, right? So the work of a low pass filter is it allows only low frequencies. and it rejects or it attenuates the high frequency components so low pass filter means which allows only low frequencies so the pam signal is given to the low pass filter and at the output side of a low pass filter we will get the demodulated pam signal so here for demodulation of the pulse amplitude modulated signal pam is fed to the low pass filter as shown in the figure and the low pass filter eliminates the high frequency ripples and generates the demodulated signal which has its amplitude proportional to pam signal at all time instant the signal is then applied to the an inverting amplifier to amplify its signal level to have the demodulated output with almost equal amplitude with the modulated modulating signal so after passing it to the low pass filter we are giving it to the inverting amplifier and here the figure shows the modulated and demodulated of a pam signal so if you observe here the first one is a modulating signal and the second waveform is a modulated signal and the third one is a demodulated signal so this is about a pam so simple generation and the modulation of a pam in now we will see the advantages of pam and disadvantages of pam and applications of pam where we are using this pam so coming to the advantages of pam so it is very easy to generate and demodulate pam compared to the remaining methods and whereas coming to the disadvantages so pam does not utilize any constant amplitude pulses so output is distorted due to the additive noise so that it is frequently so it so that it is infrequently used and the second one is transmission bandwidth required is too large so the bandwidth which we require for the transmission purpose is a too large and the third one is transmitted power is not constant so these are the disadvantages of a pam pulse amplitude modulation and coming to the applications so this pam is used in radio telemetry for remote monitoring and sensing so these are used in radio telemetry for remote monitoring and sensing so that is about the p so in today's class we have seen about the how a pam signal will be generated and demodulation of a pam so in next class we will see the remaining methods like generation of a pwm and demodulation of a pwm and generation and demodulation of a ppm pulse position modulation in next classes we will see about the pwm and ppm thanks for watching